Hi book lovers, welcome back to my channel. I've got another big book haul for you guys. These are all the books that I got back in November. I've got a bunch of romances from some publishers and I also got a bunch of books for myself. I bought quite a few books back in November actually. I bought more books than usual mainly because it's the holidays and I wanted to treat myself and I also bought this very expensive special edition set that I am still shocked that I actually got. The reason why I was able to get this said is because today's video is being sponsored. Today's video is sponsored by Boxu. Boxu is a Japanese snack box subscription and each box is filled with a bunch of premium authentic Japanese snacks. These are definitely snacks you won't find at your typical grocery store. Each month's box has a different theme and it makes for a really great holiday gift and they're also currently having a giveaway. So if you subscribe before December 31st, not only would you be getting Boxu, but you would also be getting a chance to win free tickets to Japan. They'll be picking one lucky winner to win a free set of tickets and anyone who is subscribed before December 31st is automatically entered. You can use my code at Lacey10 and the link in my description to get 10% off your Boxu subscription. You'll be automatically entered in their giveaway and you can also check out the terms and conditions and other methods of entry. A big thank you again to Boxu for sponsoring today's video. So here's my book haul, here's everything that I got last month and I'll start off with the books that some publishers sent me. First is this um um, really nice bag. It was packaged with this nice bag. Bloom Books sent me the box set of the Grey series by E.L. James. I think it's called the Grey Trilogy. It's the box set um, but it's basically the three books that are Fifty Shades but told in a Christian's point of view. It's still boxed up. I haven't even taken out the plastic wrap covering it. It was packaged very nicely, but I haven't read any of these books. I've read the original trilogy, but I haven't read Christian's point of view books. So now I have all of them to read. It does have some bonus stuff like the Freed Wedding Invitation, six unique Fifty Shades collector postcards, and of course this box that it comes in. Bloom Books also sent me a book that I was really looking forward to. This is King of Battle and Blood by Scarlett St. Clair. This is the first book in her new fantasy romance series. I haven't read it yet. I definitely want to. It's on my December TBR. The cover is so pretty. I love it. I have been reading more of Scarlett St. Clair recently. I just finished up or cut up on her Hades and Persephone series which was really good so I am excited to read this new series it's a vampire romance series it's a marriage of convenience the hero is a vampire king that the heroine is forced to marry and she wants to assassinate him but he doesn't let her. So enemies to lovers, vampires, marriage of convenience, it sounds so good. I got a bunch of very exciting arcs, some 2022 arcs. I still can't believe that we're already coming up on 2022. This one is the upcoming Colleen Hoover book. It's an arc of Reminders of Him, which is coming out next month in January. It's her next standalone. The blurb kind of reminds me of Regretting You. It's about a young mom who is trying to rebuild this life for herself after being in prison for many years. It does mention a romance so hopefully it doesn't fall too much in the women's fiction category. This one is Camilla Knows Best by Farrah Heron. She was the author of Accidentally Engaged which I did enjoy for the most part. Like it was good, not amazing, but I did like it for the most part. So I am looking forward to this one. It's a retelling of Emma by Jane Austen, just Bollywood style. It's got friends to lovers. The hero is the heroine's family friend. And there's also puppy involved. There's a whole like dog shelter involved in this book so that sounds great. This one I'm sure many people are excited about. It is Hook, Line, and Sinker by Tessa Bailey. This is the one book that I have read so far. I think it might be the first 2022 romance that I read but I did like it. I gave it four stars. I sadly didn't love it quite as much as It Happened One Summer but it was so good. It's a very solid friends to lovers romance. Very slow burn surprisingly. There is some forced proximity involved because Hannah moves in temporarily into Fox's home and it was really fun. And I also got this arc of Lucky Leap Day by Anne-Marie Walker. It's got another animal on the cover. It's got a puppy. It's about this Irish tradition of women proposing on Leap Day and that's exactly what the heroine does after one too many drinks. It's a bit of a Hollywood romance. The heroine is a screenwriter. The hero is this aspiring actor and now they have to figure out what to do with their marriage. I got these three books that Montlake sent me. Three of their 
their newer releases. This one is the new Christy Caldwell, A Wanton for All Seasons. It's a historical romance, a second chance romance. The main characters were young lovers. But now they are all grown up and he is very proper while she is kind of ruined. They reunite when she asks him to help her out, pretend to court her. So there's fake dating here, fake courting here. I got Love, Comment, Subscribe by Kathy Yardley, which is about YouTubers. It's a YouTuber romance. The main characters were frenemies back in high school. Now she's this beauty influencer and he is a gaming YouTuber and they have to collab. I do really want to get to this one soon just because it sounds like so much fun. And I was also sent Dance of a Burning Sea by E.J. Mello. This is book two in her new fantasy romance series. I read book one but it was just okay. The second book is about the second sister. There are three sisters so I'm guessing there's gonna be a trilogy. It's a pirate romance. The hero is a pirate. He threatens the heroine uh, to hold her hostage so at least this one does sound a little bit more fun than book one was. I was sent one of my most anticipated historical romances of the year which is A Scoundrel of Her Own by Stacey Reed. This is book three in her Sinful Wallflower series and I am so freaking excited about it because this couple, this third couple, was teased in book two. So I'm really looking forward to it. The heroine is a lady. The hero is definitely not a part of the high society. She does moonlight at one of his clubs as a singer and she has his protection. It sounds very intense like usual from Stacey Reed so hopefully I'll get to this one soon. I got the new Kristen Ashley Dream Keeper. I think this is book three or four in her Dream Team series. Okay, yes, it is book four. I've only read book one, so I am quite behind on this series. It's a contemporary romance, romantic suspense. The heroine is a single mom, and her daughter decides to play matchmaker between her and her hero. That sounds adorable. I did really enjoy book one when I read it, so I do need to eventually catch up on the series. Avon sent me some goodies. This one is a Julia Quinn Bridgerton book. It's the wit and wisdom of Bridgerton. Lady Whistledown's official guide. It's not like a new book per se. It's mainly like a bind up of quotes from the series, from the Bridgerton series. The only new material are the letters from Lady Whistledown, but the inside of the book is really pretty. And I don't know if you can tell, but there is some gold foiling on the cover. And this is the holiday romance that Avon sent, Duke Actually by Jenny Holiday. This is the second book in her holiday romance series. She released one last year, A Princess for Christmas, which was really cute. And this couple, they were the secondary characters from book one. It's friends to lovers, the heroine has sworn off dating, sworn off love, and the hero is a freaking baron. He's an actual heir to a dukedom and he really needs to marry. I was so happy when I was sent A Certain Appeal by Vanessa King. This one has a gorgeous cover. I love it. It's a Pride and Prejudice modern retelling. The heroine is Liz Bennett and then he is Will Darcy. It's set in a burlesque club. The heroine is one of the performers and she ends up of seeing the hero at the club watching her. But then of course in Pride and Prejudice fashion she overhears him saying something bad about her behind her back and now she hates him but then their best friends are getting together so they're forced to be around each other a lot. I haven't gotten to it yet. I did put the audiobook on hold at my library but that's taking quite a long time. This is the new Tracy Garvis Graves Heard It in a Love Song. It's in this gorgeous hardcover. I liked her last release, The Girl He Used to Know, so I do eventually want to get to this. I haven't heard the best things about it so far, but it does sound cute. The heroine is divorced. She's newly divorced. The hero is a single dad. She teaches at the elementary school where his daughter attends, and it's friends to lovers, and I always love that. I was so freaking happy when Random House sent me Laura Olympus. This is volume one in this beautiful hardcover. It's by Rachel Smythe. It was originally a webtoon, but it's now gotten published, which is really exciting. It's pretty much the one webtoon that I actually care about and I'm invested in, though I will say I am quite behind on the series. This is volume one of this Hades and Persephone retelling. It's episodes one through 25, and I'm just so obsessed with this artwork. The art and the colors are just so nice, and I'm always a sucker for Hades and Persephone. I got a bunch of books from Berkeley. These are the romances that they sent me. This one is the new Nalini Singh. It's Archangel's Light, which I have read and I really enjoyed. It is 
French lovers and very, 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 very slow burn. It's like the slowest slow burn that I've ever read. It's the MM romance in the series. It's Adon and Ilium's romance. It's a paranormal romance, an angel romance. Both of them are angels. Another paranormal romance, Dark Tarot by Christine Feehan. This one is part of her Carpathian series. I think the series is in the 30s now. I'm not too sure. I've only read book one, Dark Prince, and I did like that one but I haven't read anything past that. And also each chapter does have its own tarot card. I got this special edition of Ice Planet Barbarians by Ruby Dixon. This is my second favorite in the series. My top favorite is book two, but I haven't finished the series. I read about half of them because that's when I got burnt out on the series, but I am really happy that Berkeley picked them up, picked up the first two books in the series and gave them these beautiful new covers. It's an alien romance. I discovered the series many many years ago when it first came out in serial format. It was so good, so addicting. The human heroine, she gets shipwrecked. Her spaceship gets shipwrecked onto this completely foreign planet full of big blue aliens. This special print edition has a bonus novella called Ice Planet Honeymoon. I also got Don't Fall in Love by Jackie Lau. I think this is her very first traditionally published book. She was always indie published Publish, but she did get picked up by Berkeley, which is really exciting. I did actually read this one for once. I read some books in my book haul. I recommended the audiobook at my library months before the release date, and I might have been the first one to actually get the audio from the library, which was crazy. That never happens to me. I'm usually never first in line. I'm like, 20 something. But this one is a hootie romance. It's a baking romance. The heroine is a baker. The hero is a Canadian actor. He ends up joining the celebrity baking show and he asks the heroine for help to teach him how to bake. I thought it was cute. I'll be talking about it a little bit more in my November wrap up. But if you like foodie romances, baking romances, definitely check it out. I got The Fastest Way to Fall by Denise Williams. This one I actually did read. I recently just finished it. It is this author's second book. And and I did like it, but I didn't love it quite as much as her debut. It's about a plus size heroine who works for this lifestyle website. She writes for them. And her newest assignment is to write about her experience with a personal trainer who is the hero. It's actually an epistolary romance, which took me by surprise, but I love it. I love that trope. The way that the fitness training works is that they communicate through an app. It's all through text and they're not supposed to, but they do end up falling in love before they ever even meet each other in real life. And this is The Singles Table by Sarah Desai. This is her third standalone. This one's got an opposites attract romance. It's set at a wedding. The heroine is a lawyer and she is trying to match make for the grumpy hero who is also a former military security specialist. This one sounds like so much fun. I read Sarah Desai's first book, The Marriage Game, and that one was great. I really enjoyed that one. So I need to continue with more of her books. I got some non-romances from Berkeley too. This one is A Swift and Savage Tide by Chloe Neal. This is the second book in her pirate historical fantasy series. I haven't read book one yet, but I do own it. I am a big fan of her vampire romance series though, so I will eventually get to this series. These two are women's fiction. This is The Wedding Ringer by a debut author, Carrie Ray. The main character here is paid to join a bridal party. She's paid to become a bridesmaid. And this one is Love, Lists, and Fancy Ships by Sarah Grande Ruiz. Main character here, she works at a yacht and she has a bucket list of 30 things that she needs to complete. In this last Berkeley book is Guild Boss by Jane Ann Krenz. It's a sci-fi book. I had no idea Jane Ann Krenz wrote sci-fi books, but this is it. It's part of her Harmony series. These books are the ones that Sourcebook sent me. This is a historical romance. Fortune Favors the Duke by Kristen Vaden. The heroine here was supposed to enter this marriage of convenience with the Duke, but unfortunately he dies before their wedding and she ends up falling for the new Duke. And these two are small town romances by Babette De Jong and they both have dogs on the cover. This one is a romance. It's How to Survive a Modern Day Fairy Tale by Elle Cruz. The heroine loves to read romance books and the hero is none other than a billionaire 
CEO. Also, almost completely forgot, I got this arc of An Unexpected Distraction by Catherine Bybee, but this one already released. It came out back at the end of November. It's Romantic Suspense, book three in the Richter series. I have some last few non-romance books that I got from some publishers before I get into the indie romances that I got. This one is the new Jodi Picoult, Wish You Were Here. This adorable cover is a YA romance. It's Cupcake by Cookie O'Gorman. It's about high school, about homecoming. The Other Family by Wendy Corsi Staub, which is a thriller. And this is The Wife Upstairs by Rachel Hawkins, which is a retelling of Jane Eyre. And then these are the Book of the Month books that I got from Book of the Month. My Body by Emily Ratajkowski. Will by Will Smith. A Little Hope by Ethan Joella. The Keeper of Night by Kylie Lee Baker. The Family by Naomi Krupitsky. The Collective by Allison Galen. And The Romance from Last Month, How to Marry Keanu Reeves in 90 Days by K.M. Jackson. Also, this is completely unrelated, but look at what I did. I finally printed out these uh, covers, these fan-made covers by Clemibi. You can find both of these covers, A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J. Moss and The Brightest Night by Jennifer L. Armantrout on her Instagram. You can download them for free and print them out. I've been wanting to print these out for such a long time because I need matching covers and I got like a gift card for Shutterfly, so finally used it. They both turned out so nice. Not exactly perfect just because I had to use my scissors on these so the lines aren't perfectly straight but whatever they are passable and I figured I might as well show these off in this book haul because I don't know where else I could show them. Now I'll show you guys some romances that indie authors sent me. This is Sophie Lark's duet. This is her Sinner's duet. Book one is There Are No Saints and book two is There Is No Devil. This is a dark romance duet. It's a serial killer romance. The hero is a serial killer and I think he's supposed to kill the heroine or like his serial killer friend is supposed to kill her. I don't really know. The blurb is pretty vague, but I've heard good things about this duet. I've heard really good things about book one. I still have not read Sophie Lark yet, but I'm planning to read her at Mafia Romance this week, actually. I'm starting with Brutal Prince because that's the one that everyone keeps telling me to start with. Nikki Sloan sent me this signed gorgeous copy of The Temptation, which is book five in her Filthy Rich American series, which I love. This is Vance's book. It's a standalone in the series. You could read it as a standalone, but you might as well read the whole series because it is so good. Vance is the younger Hale brother. His older brother, Royce, he got his romance in the first three books in the series. And then book four was Vance's dad's romance. So Vance is the last, he's the final Hale to get his book. He's the last Hale to get his book. The Temptation is so much sweeter than the previous four books. Like those were really intense, a little bit suspenseful, but this one is just... A really sweet romance with some fake dating in it. Vance makes a bet with this really close friend to go celibate for 90 days but then that friend ends up disappearing and he wants to find out where she is. So he teams up with the heroine Emery who is that friend's friend and they kind of come up with a scheme to fake date in order to get into that missing friend's dad's house because that's where they believe they'll find all the answers and it's a good thing that Emery is a professional lock picker. She pretty much hacks open safes for a living, which I thought was really cool. It's a sweet romance. I thought it was unique and fun, and I really liked it. I got Out of the Blue by Pete Angelico. This is her new standalone. The heroine runs an animal rescue, and she ends up with a Hollywood romance because the hero is a famous movie star. I was so happy when I got this next series in the mail. It's the Cinderella Trilogy by Kay Webster. Book one is Stroke of Midnight. Book two is Prince Charming, and book three is The Glass Slipper. If you watched one of my more recent videos where I recommended five romances to read before the year ends, this is one of the books, well one of the series that I recommended. I love this series. It was so freaking addicting. It's dark romance and of course it's steamy because it is Kay Webster. It's got an age gap, a rich hero. He pretty much becomes the heroine's sugar daddy. I also got Hard to Love by Kay Bromberg, which is one of her sports romance series. The main characters had a one night stand and then they find out that he has just taken on the job of her new sports agent and it's a tennis romance. The heroine is a tennis player. I got this book by Willow Winters, Tell Me You Want Me, mainly because of this cover. I was 
very curious about it. It's an office romance. The hero is, of course, the boss, the CEO. But that's pretty much all I know about this one. The blurb is another big kind of blurb. But since I do love office romances, I do want to give this one a try. I was also sent A Moment for Us by Kern Michaels. This is a standalone in her Willow Creek Valley series. I haven't read her for a very long time. I definitely haven't read the series yet, but I have been wanting to read her again. This one sounds good. It's a best friend's brother romance. She had a crush on him when they were younger and there's also a surprise pregnancy. I got Dangerous Temptation by Gianna Darling which is book one in a duet. Book two was supposed to come out this month like mid-December but then she pushed it another month so it's not coming until mid-January which is probably when I'll start this duet. It kind of looks like it's a dark romance. It's a guardian ward romance. I also haven't read Gianna Darling for a very long time. I stopped reading her back during her enslaved duet. Like I read book one, but then I never read book two. So I really want to start this series when it's complete. And then I got this really interesting paranormal romance from Emma Scott. It's called The Sinner. I think this is our first paranormal romance, but it's an angel romance in case you couldn't tell by this cover, but he's an angel, she is human. And then I got some early Christmas gifts that I want to show you. This one's from Jessica from Peace Love Books. It's Twisted Pride by Cora Riley, which is my favorite Cora Riley book. It's pretty much the only one that I really, really love from her. It's a mafia romance. It's Remo book. He's the capo of his family and I loved it so much. It's a kidnapping romance. It gets dark but it was so good. This is The Charm Offensive by Alison Cochran which Desiree, my friend Desiree, sent me. She mainly sent this one because she wanted me to read it. It's one of the few books on the Goodreads Choice Awards that I didn't read. It's an MM romance between the reality TV show producer and a new star on the show. Lisa from Remarkably Lisa got me window shopping by Tessa Bailey. She's Canadian so she pretty much just sent me the money so I could get this book for myself. But I adored this one. It's a Christmas romance. Such a good Christmas romance. Perfect to read right now. The hero owns this department store and she gets hired to be the new window decorator. And then someone sent me Creed by Kristen Ashley. I don't know who sent it to me. It was anonymous, but I'm still really glad to get it because I do love the Unfinished Hero series by Kristen Ashley. It's my favorite series of hers. Creed and Knight are my favorite books in the series, so really glad to have this. So those were gifts from other people and then I got some gifts from myself. I got two Laura Thalassa books. I of course had to get her new book, Death, which is the fourth and final book in her Four Horsemen series and I love this one so much. I can't decide if this is my top favorite one, but it's up there. It's either death or war for me, but look at this beautiful cover. And then I'm one book closer to completing the Bargainer series by her. This is the novella The Emperor of Evening Stars, which is Dez's point of view. I love this fantasy romance series. It's currently my favorite from Laura Thalassa. And then since Target had an amazing sale going on, they had like a buy two, get one free sale. I got myself a six books. This is The Dare by Al Kennedy. This is the fourth and final book in her Briar You series, which was the last book that I needed to complete the series. It's got fake dating, but it is my least favorite of the series, one of my least favorite Al Kennedy books, but I had to get it just to complete my collection of the series. I also got The Legacy by Al Kennedy, which is her newest release. It's like the collection of the four novellas of all four couples from the off-campus series. This one was really cute. I didn't love all the novellas but it was still really fun to revisit my favorite characters. I got these two Kristen Becca Ritchie books, these two in the Leica series. This is Sinful Like Us, which is Jane and Thatcher's second book, and Headstrong Like Us is Moffy and Pharaoh's fourth and final book. I have read these two and I do like them. I don't love them, but again, I just really want to complete my series collection. I think I have all the way through book seven now. And then I had to get myself one of my favorites of this year, First Love Take Two by Sashni Patel. This is a second chance romance that was so freaking sweet and emotional and heartwarming. And my final Target book was Crown of Darkness by Beck McMaster. This is book two in her Dark Court Rising series. I loved book one so so much but I haven't continued with the series just yet so I haven't read the sequel yet. I'm hoping I'll love it. I'm hoping I'll love it as much as book one because you know I bought this. It's her fantasy romance series. It's got Faye, all these different 
Desert Kingdoms. The first book had a vague Hades and Persephone vibe to it. It's not really a retelling, just got a little vibe to it, but it was so, so good. And then I was able to find these two Beverly Jenkins historical romances. I only bought two historical romances last month, which is unheard of, but obviously I couldn't pass up this gorgeous paperback of Indigo, which has been so freaking hard to find. It took me forever. It was easier to find the hardcover than it was to find this paperback because when I thought I was getting the paperback last year, I got the hardcover instead, but I finally got this beautiful paperback. It's currently my favorite Beverly Jenkins book. It's one of my favorite historical romances of all time. It was amazing. And then I found this beautiful hardcover of Before the Dawn. This one sounds really interesting. The heroine has just been widowed and her hero is her late husband's son who doesn't like her because he thinks that she's a gold digger who only married his dad for his money. And finally, my special edition books that I got. This first one was actually my rep box. It's the M. Robinson box from Mystic Box. These are the exclusive hardcovers of El Diablo and Sinful Arrangement. They both are dark romances and Sinful Arrangement has a marriage of convenience. And then I had to get this exclusive edition of The Initiation by Nikki Sloan. This is the special edition from from Hello Lovely Box, who I'm also a rep for. This is the first book in the Filthy Rich American series by Nikki Sloan, and you all know how much I love her and love this series, so I couldn't pass this up. I'm also a rep for the Bookish Box, but I had to buy myself this set because I was really feeling the FOMO, but it is the most I've ever spent on some books, and I'm still crying over it, but they're really pretty. I got the Blood and Ash series by Jennifer L. Armentrout. This is a very fancy edition. The edges are all sprayed. Each book is sprayed a different design. This is what book one from Blood and Ash looks like. And this is the back cover. Book two, A Kingdom of Flesh and Fire. This is the front cover. And then here is the back. And then book three, The Crown of Gilded Bones. And I don't know if you can tell, but the titles are foiled. And then if you put all the spines together, they do match at the bottom. I'm really happy with these. They do actually look a lot better than I thought in person when I finally got them. I was like, okay, yes, this might be worth the money because I spent so much money on these during their Black Friday sale. I will say though, my main complaint is just that it's really dark. I would prefer if they printed it a little bit lighter, but still I'm really happy with them. And then each book, the interior has this fancy design too. This is the front page of From Blood and Ash. And here's book three. I didn't even realize they were bones, but Crown of Yielded Bones. And then each book also has one interior illustration. Here's the one from book one. And then I almost completely forgot the stamping on the naked hardcover. This is what From Blood and Ash looks like, A Kingdom of Flesh and Fire. And then of course book three, The Crown of Gilded Bones. This is the interior dust jacket artwork from book one. Here is book two, and this is my favorite of the interior artwork. And this is book three. That's it though for this book haul. I saved my most expensive for last. But let me know what you guys think of any of the books that I mentioned. Let me know if you read any of them, if there are any that I really need to get to. But that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye.